Hi guys, this one's by request. I had a viewer ask if I would do a video showing the construction of my acoustic panels that I use, and I can't do a video showing the construction itself because I made these like 10 years ago and I didn't take video at the time, but I can give a quick overview on how they're put together. Shown here is one of my portable traps that I take with me on location, or I can move them around my studio to spot treat issues depending on what I'm doing at the time. But the stands are basically two by fours that were split down the middle, cut at a 45 degree angle at one section, and they're all screwed together onto a plywood base. The panels themselves are two inch thick Owens Corning 703. These are two by four foot panels. They come in different sizes and thicknesses, but I thought this would be ideal for this particular purpose. They're wrapped with curtains from an old house where I used to live, and they're held onto the posts with long wood screws and large washers used as strain reliefs. Now in the control room, I use four inch panels. They're actually made out of two two inch thick panels. Uh, I recommend Owens Corning 705 FSK. 705 is more dense than 703, and FSK is a foil back. Now the reason for that is more density and the foil backing work together to absorb low frequencies much better, which is where most of the problems in studios are. So you mount these with the foils back to back and that allows the more efficient absorption of low frequencies without taking away the efficiency of the high frequency absorption. I use four vertically mounted traps, one in each corner. I have two horizontally mounted traps, one off to each side of the console and one directly above the console. And I recommend leaving them on stands even though these are basically a permanent installation because I want them spaced away from the wall. The, the velocity of air is always zero at the boundary. That's the wall. So if you have the absorption right against the wall, it's not going to work as well as if you can get away from the wall, especially in the lower frequencies. Now, in this image here, this is when I first set up my control room. I had no absorption in here whatsoever, and I didn't even have my subwoofer in place when I took this measurement, so you notice that the low end is quite weak. Uh, now, compare this to the next image where I do have the corner traps in place and I have my subwoofer set up here. There is more than an entire additional octave in the low frequencies, so this really shows off the importance of having a subwoofer. Now, the next image is the fully treated room. I took this measurement literally just before doing this video and turned off the subwoofer to give a more direct comparison with the original measurement. Now you notice how much more flat the frequency response is. And because of this, um, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and say that the most important aspect of a studio is the acoustics. Whether you're miking a, a guitar or you're listening to the mix, the sound is passing through the room to reach either the microphone or your ears. And that affects the recorded sound. It reflects the judgments that you make. Now, if you look at the original measurement again, I could have moved that mic a few centimeters and gotten a completely different outcome. So I hope this was helpful to you. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.